This house is complicated. This place is complicated. It's a dynamic collection of marks and scars and stories and experiences and people tied to it for decades. It's a place built for a family, a place to hold memories. And after almost a century, it stands to celebrate one of many residents that called it home. James Castle was a tenant at 5015 Eugene Street in Boise, Idaho. He came in 1931 and lived here for almost 46 years. James was born in Garden Valley, Idaho in 1899. He was born deaf and presumably never learned any formal language. He turned to a constant production of artwork which became his form of communication and over a lifetime created thousands of artworks, all seemingly rooted in curiosity and discovery. I think the thing about James Castle is you have to go to him, and you take some time. Um, but it's so rewarding once you do that. He just had an appreciation and awe for the landscape and the interiors and exteriors around him. He just seems to have had such a beautiful soul, and you will be able to feel that when you get here. And it's just been thrilling and amazing to watch the transformation of this very humble home into this great center where people will come and, and learn about James Castle and learn about the architecture here. Over the last three years, his place has been a site for researchers, archaeologists, surveyors, historians, architects, planners, engineers, conservators, and more importantly, other artists. All working to preserve his legacy and create a space for people to connect deeper with Castle and with what Castle represents. His spaces inside the house, the shed, and cozy cottage trailer offer us an opportunity to better understand his genius. So the city of Boise bought the property in 2015. The house was originally a small one-room structure, date unknown when it was built. Our vision as a city agency is to preserve the exterior of the house to kind of look and feel as if it did when Castle lived here. And so we are kind of taking the 30s as our kind of defining period of the house. Throughout the U.S. we have a lot of preserved homes of a certain era, especially the Victorian era. We don't have a lot of vernacular homes or everyday homes, especially from the Pacific Northwest, especially from Idaho. So this is a really unique project in a sense that we have access to a house that was unprofessionally built for a family. Nothing was ever torn down, so everything was over built over top of the original structure. What you'll see is some of the actual original walls exposed here. We discovered that the Castle family really loved wallpaper. Thankfully, when those building additions and renovations were done, people were fairly short-sighted about that, and they didn't rip out what was there before, they just covered it up. And one of the things that Castle was well known for was bundling groups of artworks and storing them away or tucking them away. During one of our demolition days, we actually found some work in the wall. He's creating work every single day. He's creating an immense amount of material. At some point, you would think you would have to start tucking it away somewhere to keep it safe. And actually hiding it in a wall cavity is a really great way to preserve the artwork. The, the little tag that's still on it. Yeah. Oh gosh. It's too much. Put it's it all back. Much. I know. Put it back. I can't, I can't. <laughs> Put it back. <laughs> a little illustration of a ship. Oh, that's our house. That's the house. 
Look at the power lines and the trees. The insects have got to it. That's amazing. Oh my god. That is a beautiful piece. However it got in there, it ended up there, and it stayed there for roughly 75 years or longer, and um, waited for us to, to discover it. To find it. We have newspaper from the 1930s that still adhered to these uh, wall panels. For anybody who's remodeled an old house, this isn't really an, an unusual feature. The really great part about this project is that we can take this element that would normally be covered back up or thrown out or whatever. We can, we have the opportunity to create a, a design feature and an exhibit feature out of, out of this. The way that it's constructed and the materials that are used is very similar to the way that Castle worked and the way that Castle did his own constructions and the materials that he was using. So this is sort of a nice collection of some of the materials we found on site. Um, some really great old linoleum flooring. Yeah, again, this is another piece that most people would have just thrown away doing a typical residential renovation. You just pack it with some newspaper, wallpaper over the front, and uh, move along with your day. This is sort of an incidental, um, accidental uh, expression and, and comparison to Castle's own work that we just pulled right off the wall. There's a certain desperation behind the number of nails on this wall. <laughs> uh, I think it's the layers are stuck. Look at this beautiful oh, wall. Views. It's so interesting, it's just... Oh my gosh. This looks like a woman's dress fabric. It's like the little waist of the skirt. Mm hmm Why would they have done this? <laughs> I mean, I, get, I, I would understand why you would do the whole thing in newspaper or the whole thing in fabric, mm -hmm. but they didn't do that. There's color periodicals up here. There's it's the skirt like or muslin or whatever this is. Do you think James put this together or do you think someone else in the family could put this together in this way? I don't know. I mean, that's a really beautiful collage of materials to leave just as we are leaving this wall intact. Mm -hmm. It's so amazing, Byron. It feels like a designed space, strangely. This just gives us like a whole new view of the interior of this house. Yeah, this is the first time we've seen this. Wow. <laughs> Every time we do this, I think about Castle's work in general and the first kind of layer, your first like entry level experience into his work is kind of see it and feel like they have it figured out. But then? But then you, I mean, you spend a little time with it or you start literally peeling back the layers of it and you realize that it's a lot more complex and that there's a lot more underneath of it and actually quite a few more layers. And so the house itself feels that way. Yeah, is his act of assembling layers of paper together and stitching them together a constructive act that he saw happen here? James Castle's art is rooted in place, and I think it's so important to understand him, to have context to his story, and to have this site uh, is just phenomenal. Here we are at the James Castle House three years later. 
three years later <laughs> in the finished space that at the beginning of the project was really a living room, a bathroom, back bedroom, and a kitchen, and is now an art gallery space. So we really do have kind of a snapshot of this building through time just by exposing the rafters. The new front door will be moved over to the retail space, which is what we're calling the general store. I'm inspired by the Castle family's general store and post office in Garden Valley. I feel like this image here that Castle drew of the port tradition was the start of all of this for us. Yeah, it was a rare opportunity to be able to take the artist's impressions of his living space and use those as cues. When we discovered this wall in the back bedroom with the fabric and paper, we immediately had to rethink our exhibit concepts. This will be our permanent exhibit space. So in addition to stabilizing these walls, we will be showcasing a collection of James Castle artifacts. We are standing in the new addition now, which is the artist in residence space. So when we have an artist in residence with us, they'll stay three months on site, so they'll live and work here at the James Castle House. The name of the game in this room is really Indirect Northern Light. The opportunity for the entire studio to be this sort of inside-outside space, so in the warmer months, the entire studio opens up off to the side yard. The resident will have a, a studio that we're in and a sleeping quarters. And the bedroom space is really set up very in a very similar fashion to Castle's shed. It's about the same size and it has great proximity to the shed through the large plate glass window in the back. I wanted to give the artists that stay here as close to that experience as we could get without the wood stove and without living outdoors. Today, the house is a center for exhibitions, tours, performances, talks, an artist in residence program, and community partnerships. But on a national level, it's a really unique opportunity to be able to be in the physical environment where a, a very important artist had created work. So we hope that the artists that um, engage with us through the residency program are responding to some form of Castle's story. We wanted to make sure that we provided an opportunity to make that connection a little bit stronger. We couldn't go with a strict preservation process with the house and the grounds, but we're keeping this space alive and relevant to art making into the future.